Good afternoon. Good evening. I am Apostle Jimmy Jumper, founder of Jesus Delivery International Ministry and JDI Networks. And I welcome you to our broadcast today. Today is June the 14th, 2020. And we are getting ready for our eighth year in ministry. And I'm so excited. So that'll be within two weeks of yesterday. So we are, today, our um, message will be the eighth, the number eight, a fresh start. Because eight is new beginning in the prophetic. Well, we're going to hit on some of that today. And then we're going to uh, just kind of go forward with what does said the Lord. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Holy Spirit, you are welcome on this broadcast. You are welcome in the ministry. You are welcome in JDI Networks. You are just welcome in me. I thank you for this morning, the eighth, the number eight, and a fresh start. Help the people to hear from heaven, from what the throne room of heaven is speaking to the earth realm here right now. Holy Spirit, lead, guide, show me what to say. Use my vocal cords so your people can hear from you through me. In Jesus' most mighty name, amen to the Father, amen to the Son, and amen to the Holy Ghost. We start off each broadcast with our daily confession. And our daily confession comes from Isaiah uh, chapter 11 verse 2. And since we are going into our um, new beginning, our eighth year, God has had me to add on two more verses to our daily confession. So, Isaiah 2, 11 and 2, the King James Version, it speaks as following. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might, your strength. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And we always talk about the fear of the Lord. But in Psalms chapter 34 verses 7 and 9 is what we have added. And I want you to do this daily confession daily because it states here in the King James Version, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and deliver them. So it says in, in Isaiah 11 and 2, the last part is the fear of the Lord. So why would you have that fear of the Lord? Because the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. So if you fear the Lord, um, he's going to have this angel camped around you. He's going to deliver you from anything that you need to be delivered for. And then number nine, it says... Oh, fear the Lord, ye he saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. So if you fear the Lord, you're going to have that angel camped around you. You're going to be delivered for anything that you need to be delivered for. And then you are not going to have a want for anything. So do that daily so you can get delivered from whatever daily and keep that angel camped around you because you are in the arms of the Lord. 
Now, as I talked about earlier, uh, the message today is the number eight, a fresh start. Everybody needs a fresh start from time to time, especially in these times that we're going through here in the world. Uh, a lot of job loss. We don't know from day to day what's going to happen. And God is getting ready to give you his spirits because you want those spirits to lie upon you in the daily confession so you will know what to do with the day-to-day -day changes. And it's going to be coming from the heavenly place and not from the earthly realm. So like I said, we here at Jesus Deliver International Ministry are getting ready for our eighth year in ministry. I have been looking back at, um, at some of the things that we did from the beginning. Um, looking at the start of this ministry in 2012. So be looking uh, for some videos of the start of the ministry. What we have been doing uh, in the past. So we can go on to a future, a great future. The things God placed in my spirit to do, uh, and what, and and I ha I'm trying to read my notes here, uh, and what has been done this far. So I've been looking at the things of the past and seeing what we have been, what we have done. Whatever God placed in my spirit in 2012 to do with the ministry. The main mandate I remember so clearly is teach leaders to lead. And sometimes I got off track with that, but this is the thing, and it comes in various ways. And I remember even here lately, I got beside myself and I had to pray for my spirit because the enemy was trying to come in and show me and, and tell me some things that was not true. So I had to, I, I recognized it and I told a friend of mine, please pray for my heart because things are trying to creep in and destroy what God has put together. But you know, what God has put together, no man, no creature, no Satan, can take away. So on the 27th of this month, I will put something together uh, that will show the 2012 up to 2017, I mean 2019, and that will enter in to uh, 2020, what we are going up to. I remember in 2019, I had this prophecy. He gave it to me in April of 2019. It was so heavy. I didn't really understand even when I delivered the prophecy. But I know the enemy was really at me. So I had to have uh, people just praying for me so I can put it out there. He had me to destroy generation curses uh, in 2019 so we can move into this new beginning, this eighth year. So uh, today, I just want to, uh, to talk a little bit about the number eight. I was saying this morning, I was like, Lord, you didn't give me anything. And he's actually want me to walk you into the eighth year. So the number eight in the prophetic is new beginning. In the natural, you will see a baby has a new beginning. Uh, that baby has a fresh start in life. So that's what we're going to look at today, tomorrow, and so on. Like a new baby, getting ready, fresh start. They know nothing. All they know is to eat and laugh and poop and eat and sleep 
and laugh and do whatever. They like the games. They are just so happy. And that's what I felt on my first when I was ordained as a apostle. I was so happy. And so God wants to give you that feeling of joy and happiness, of your purpose in life. That's what number eight is for us, and that's what number eight is for you. To be happy, like a newborn baby, just lovely, just wonderful. And I have a video going around, and it's just music, but it has a new, it has a baby just kind of popping out. And uh, I was, it's, that's the fourth generation starting with me down to the fourth generation. And that fourth generation is popping out to say, welcome to your new beginning. We here at JDI Ministry, God has given us a fresh new start. I remember I was getting uh, to a point that the passion was dwindling away. Everything in the news and uh, that you watch daily. So a lot of times I don't even look at the news. But I know it's things that I need to pray for. Because even if I'm not looking at it, I can feel it. Because the anointing that's up on me, I can feel things before they happen. And so I was getting a little um, depressed on the ministry, on life, just everything. But that was the enemy trying to creep in because God got something great that's coming. The dreams, the vision that he's given me for JDI Networks, I kept trying, trying, trying. I'm like, Lord, I'll wait on you because I don't know who's supposed to be connected. So look forward to that part of the ministry, the JDI Networks. That's the network that he gave me, and I was prophesied for confirmation. And when I was prophesied by a bishop that was telling me about this network I was going to have, and all the things that's going to come in with it, I was smiling inside because God had already given me the name, and he had told me what I was going to do with it. And so far and so on. So I was trying to find everything. But I was like, thank you, Lord, for confirmation. So look forward to the new beginning of JDI Network. We have started on it. But it's something even greater that God has placed in my spirit that's going to come out of it. And I'm excited about it because it's for the world. It's to help you know why you were created. As I look back on what we did and some of the uh, things we did not do and saw how God kept us together. In ministry, sometimes it can be difficult. And I had to transition from uh, my home in Richmond, Virginia, leave everything, sell everything, get rid of everything, but what God told me to keep. And... Uh, move. Eventually I found out where I was to go and I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. So basically I had to start all over from scratch. Whatever I had was in my car and I that was a transition that I knew I had to do. God gave me the strength to do it. I didn't realize what had happened to almost three years later after I moved to the place that he told me to move. Everything went quickly. I, I think I was just in shock because I wanted to please the Lord so much. I had to move my feelings and everything else out of the way because I know that he knows best. So I gave up everything because of what he want me to do. So it's not all about things. Of course, I've regained everything and better uh, within the three years. 
But if you listen to the voice of the Lord, be obedient no matter what you think or anybody else would think. And it was so funny because when I was getting rid of stuff, uh, I had pastors come over. They were picking up books from the author of JDI Publisher, that branch of the uh, ministry. The One of the pastors was picking it up for an, another prophetess. And she, instead of them laughing at me like I thought they would, she was like, thank you so much because God told me to do X, Y, Z. And I just couldn't do it. And when she saw me doing what I was doing, that encouraged her to do what she needed to do. So when you listen to the voice of the Lord and he tells you something to do, that's crazy. Because I walk in the prophetic and if you know prophets, they are so peculiar. God's people is peculiar anyway. Prophets are even worse. Apostles are even worse. Bishops are even worse. Because they listen and do what God says to do. And when I did that and I found out I was helping others with what God told them to do, that gave me peace. That gave me encouragement. That gave me strength to do what does said the Lord. So right now, God is giving you a fresh start. He has told you to do some things. And as you watch this video, it is creeping back up in your spirit. So don't listen to what man said. Do what God has told you to do with that vision that he has given to you. You are helping others with what you are doing for him. As you please God, you're going to take somebody out of a dark situation. You're going to bring light into their world. You're going to bring positivity into their world. You're going to let them see that they were born to be or what God created them to be. Eight also is the entry unto the covenant of God. Now, Let's go in Genesis chapter 9, verse 13. And this is talking about a covenant. It reads, and I'm still in King James Version. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. So, you remember in, in the book of Genesis, I'm trying to think, who's the, Noah. When Noah did what thus said the Lord, and the earth was destroyed with water. Noah and his families were the only ones that survived. But at the end, after those 40 days, uh, they landed on land. And then they saw this rainbow. And that was the covenant that God gave to man and the earth, to the earth, that he will not destroy the earth with water. So even though you get floods, you get um, one of those things that just take over everything. Um, it's not typhoon. I can't think of it, but it'll come. Uh, but it destroys with water from the from the sea. Uh, but it hasn't destroyed the whole earth because this is a covenant that God gave us that He will not destroy. So your fresh start, your new beginning, God and you will have a covenant. Between you and him, between you, him, and the ministry, between you here and your life, you need to covenant with God. We also go on to Genesis 17, 10. That's talking about another covenant. Let's see here. Oops, I'm on the right one. Verse 10.
This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thou see after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Every male child. So that was another covenant that God gave on the eighth on the eighth day. If you have a male child, that male child needs to be circumcised. Now, if you look at it today on the circumcision of the male, uh, a lot of, if they're not circumcised, they end up with, um, uh, sometimes they end up with diseases because the foreskin has not been cut correctly. Uh, and I don't want to get too much into that until I do my research. But all God is saying is that's a covenant. So make your covenant today with God. Let him do in your life what he has ordained for you. Have you made a covenant with God? If you haven't, start today. Uh, we revisited today for us our, um, our fresh start, our ministry. We went back. I'm kind of reviewing things. And uh, I'm going to put something together for you on our past so we can leave the past. And go to the future. God said in Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let me go there. That's Jeremiah 29 and 11. And all your uh, scholars do recognize that verse. And it's... I was looking at something this morning and it popped up. I said this would be perfect for the sermon for today. And this is still in the King James Version. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God knows what the thoughts that he uh, think about you. So go to God in prayer and make a covenant with him because he, he already knows everything about you. He's the one that created you. He's the one that put breath in your body. He's the one that knows why your what your purpose is, why you were created, and why and why you went through what you went through in your past to complete who you are today to go forward in your future. Also, let's go to Jeremiah 33 and and 3. That's Jeremiah 33 and 3. It says Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. So, like I said, go into prayer. Call upon the Lord, and speak with him, and see what great things he has for you. He said, call unto me. Call unto him. Pray. Pray is communication with God. And I will answer thee. So God, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are calling upon you right now. And I know in your word, in Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, call upon me and I will answer thee. So we calling upon you. And I know you hear us and you're going to answer us and you're going to show us great and mighty things 
which thou know it not. God got some great things for you. God is going to show you some stuff when you call up on him, when you go into prayer, when you ask him, Lord, I'm here for you. Teach me, show me your great and mighty things. And he is here for you, your life, your family, your ministry, whatever you are calling up on him. He's going to show you something even greater than you can ever imagine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are calling upon you right now. Everybody that's watching this video, that click on this video, let them call upon you. Like you said in Jeremiah 33 and 3. And I know you're going to answer because that's what your word says and your word is bond. And you're going to show us great and mighty things that we know it not. Oh my God, I thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hey, come by the letter that day. King of the little boat. How can you let it all day? Hey, come on, can you let it all day? Oh, come on, let it all day. Come on, let it all day. You come on, let it all day. 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 My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. In Jesus' most mighty name, amen to the Father, amen to the Son, and amen to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo! God got some great and mighty things to show you. Woo! I'm telling you. Oh, my God. Woohoo! I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> This is Apostle Jimmy Jemra, founder of Jesus Delivery International Ministry and JDI Network. God bless you.